politico Hello dear. Good morning to you. Good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are joining us. This is Mayegun Live. Thank you so much for joining me. Please read beyond the description of this broadcast. Read the description as well. Read beyond caption, rather. Like the broadcast. Then share it. So invite your friends and not so friendly friends tell all of them that my good today consider this uh, session on Mayegun's diary political tonight. Yes, Consider it as a catch up. Updates. And, yes. and some other G's that are relevant. <laughs> worthy of your time. Yes, Please read beyond the caption. And yes. Invite those who should be here. <laughs> Local government autonomy. <laughs> Subsidy removal. <laughs> Student loan. <laughs> and all other scams. <laughs> I think you deserve an update. We all do. The Nigerian House of Representatives are about to criminalize self determination. But today, so good morning to you once again, good afternoon to you, and good evening to you from wherever you are joining us uh, this moment. It is Mayegu live. Thank you. I miss you too. Right. Today, uh, Tifnumbu called for what uh, they call the Council of State meeting. And Council of State meeting is pretty much like the highest, uh, you know, level of uh, uh, the establishment, so to say, because in that Council of State, you will see your bishop, your Sheikh, you will see your royal fathers, you see past presidents, governors, and all these guys, they are all welcome to the Council of States. It's like Council of States, like people who actually decide what happened in Nigeria, kind of. So whenever they come together like that, it's meant to be an opportunity for them to advise the government of the day, you know, like we need to kind of slow it down in that part. Too. We need to cut it down in that area. The country is tearing up. You know that stuff, right? But pretty much not what this one is really doing, okay? So call who called them today just to brief them about uh, the state of, uh, you know. So after the meeting, hmm, 
they said they gave call uh pass mark votes of confidence that means yeah majority of you may not understand what call is doing however he stood them and they believed him that he is uh, doing fine and who are the prominent uh, attendees bokwari was there uh good lucky where joe lantern was there uh or bank barrow was missing okay then you know some other state governors also uh today the nigerian house of representatives they have uh, started a bill which has passed the first reading going on to the second reading and that bill is to criminalize self-determination campaign. Do you get that now? Or anyone promoting, uh, what do you call it, a tribal uh, agenda kind of, I don't know what that means, but I kind of got the first one, which means you can know, if they make it law, that simply means uh, people like myself will go to jail for 25 years, okay, for agitating for the uh, sovereign nation of the Yoruba people. Sure, you get, and everyone else, all of you, uh, the uh, Biafrans as well, you will be jailed, right? And self determination is a God given right. In a democracy, it is allowed, which simply means give them referendum and then if the majority says they are staying fine doesn't ignore or cancel the right of those who wants to or jail 25 years when they are pardoning terrorists in nigeria where they have a, a program called there is no law backing it too. they have no law backing that too but they have a program that is rehabilitating terrorists in nigeria as long as they can swear by the holy quran that they will no longer go back to terrorism and that's all that it takes repentant terrorist no court trial no law punishing them no jail time and these are murderers who are still murdering people but the again the national assembly of nigeria that doesn't really represent nigeria or nigerians this is the creation of the establishment one of the reasons why nigeria is not uh, it's never going to work. So people are already pushing that, listen, all these things that you are trying to make laws to stop people, right? Who are already so marginalized and completely out of this year, like Nigeria, except for those of you who are either benefiting now or waiting to benefit. The real people, including the people in the establishment, knows that, that listen, oh, a lot of people have disconnected completely from this contraption. And the only way we can get to know who is who and for what is to call for national uh, conference. Let everybody, even those you that love one Nigeria, you have the chance to vote for one Nigeria. Me, we know one Nigeria, eh? I will have the chance to vote for, you know, my own nation. That's what it's called. Why are you criminalizing it? When you criminalizing it, then you radicalize people. And then yeah, they pick up arms, and then there is what there is lawlessness everywhere. Politicians who create problems where there is none, then they will say they want to find the solution. Their solution will further create more problems. So they will then have to have to set up a committees that will now look into the problems that they have created. Simple thing. Everybody is trying to beat about it. I'll come back to that. So, after the uh, end bad governance uh, protest and how Tifunbu and his gang waited it out, mm -hmm. they seem to just be like uh, business as usual. Let things continue. We've told them they would need to give us time. So, yesterday, they sent this lady. I don't know if you remember her. Okay, I will remind you, don't worry. She is that uh, appointee of the Funumbu that was supposed 
to be serving NYSC National Youth Service. But she has been appointed as minister or so, right? Therefore, sorry, as a personal assistant to Tifnumbuali. Now she has breached the supposed civil service law or whatever, right? That says before you get appointed into, yeah, you must have served Nigeria. So they said no. She is not a full time appointee of Tifnumbu, that she is doing an internship, which means she is serving NYSC right now with Tifnumbu for four years. I think she's a minister. Her name is Musawa. So this is where we are going to start from this evening, okay? Which is how Tifnumbu and his team are moving on to what happened today. Let's go. Before I answer, because you asked a question, but mm. it was, I think, that twofold. Mm. Um, the unity aspect that you speak about. So let me address sure, sure. that and then come back to mm. the last part that you spoke about. I think the unity aspect in this ecosystem or within this space is not a problem because what you do find is the one thing that really unites us as a people is our arts is our arts, is our music, is our fashion, is just our expression as a people. Mm. So for me, I do not find that divide when it comes to addressing people within this space. Perhaps being the Minister of Art, Culture and Creative Economy, no matter where I go, because the issue of music, it resonates with people, mm. no matter what community Yeah, but after the to. music concert's over, they'll come out of the music hall and no, then no. become themselves No, but, but you know, you, you were talking about how I deal with it right, as sure. the unity aspect. Mm. What I find is wherever I go, I have that acceptability sure. because I'm representing a part of Nigeria that resonates with Nigerians generally. Mm. So that part of the unity is not something that we have a problem with. And I want to leverage on that to see whether we can tap and cultivate this space to bring more understanding and unity for us as a people of 240 different diverse um, tribes and cultures, right? And, and um, um, languages, mm. that part. Now, the other part that you spoke about, about the fallout, so to say, of the protest or what have you, what I think is this area, again, this space of the creativity and the space of the culture is the one language that will be able to, again, speak to the people. Because what I found with the protests, just sort of um, um, trying to um, examine it myself, mm. is I found that there was a sort of language lost in translation. The government was saying one thing, and the protesters, to me, was actually saying the same thing as the protesters. But the way it was being said, it seemed as if it was two separate things. The government is very concerned, obviously, about creating a better life for Nigerians. That is why President Bola Ahmed Tinubu has dedicated the large, a large part of his life to the betterment of not only Lagosians, but now to Nigeria. He did not um, give himself to Nigeria and go into a long, a trajectory of politics just to fail. He is here to be the best president that Nigeria has ever had. So all the policies that he has brought up, all the different initiatives are to, pro uh, to, to provide a better life for Nigeria. Nigerians, or rather the protesters, were asking for that better life. But there was a sort of, um, there was a sort of barrier in communication whereby um, it felt as if the protesters were asking for something and the government was not listening. But we are listening. The president does not sleep. He is a man who works literally 24 hours trying to find a way 
to reduce food uh, food prices. Even today, in fact, I, we, I was talking to a number uh, to, That's to the, the federal min- executive council. Uh, was, again, right. the federal executive council. Right. And again, many of us were discussing the issue of bringing down food prices. Mm. And I know because I do wear my burqa and go into the market that the food prices have started coming down now. So you're looking at um, um, trying to the, the ministry is trying to maximize production. A number of initiatives, palliatives, I know palliatives do seem like a short-term solution, but the government has had to roll out these palliatives to try to bring as an emergency sort of response for the pains that Nigerians are going through, Mm. and then coming up with different long-term solutions for what we think would would give a better life in terms of reducing food. uh, New Zealand's Lily. <laughs> Sorry about that. I know that's that is one thing about uh uh Chief Numbuani's gang, okay? Sometimes they will make you question what is she talking about? Like okay, it is the harvest time that those who manage to cultivate any little uh, piece of uh, land, it is the time they are already harvesting. So which simply means, of course, there are some certain, uh, you know, uh, food, uh, what do you call that, uh, really, really going to come down, you know, like vegetables, like pepper and all of that stuff. People are like harvesting now. Do you know what I mean? So they will tell you that, for example, when you see, um, stable electricity partly in some part of the country and be like ah, man this government is working up they started giving us over 10 hours a day 12 hours a day and some will be like ah, but you know that you are in the rainy season that they say yeah but here you get so politicians ride on that as well not because they are doing anything so if number and gang hmm, give them rise if they are hungry, share some money. If they want to go and buy anything else themselves, and then just wait it out. So you see those of you who are actually like having to do the day to day, you know, uh, buying and selling and all of that stuff, right? You will be the one to now be like, what are you talking about? Like things are coming down. What are the things coming down? What and what are, you know, the only thing that could really bring things down in that place is the reduction in your, what do you call it? Well, it is called return of uh, your subsidy, which they claim they've removed, but they are still paying. They decide, yeah? So, yeah, people like uh, Musawa, she, she's good in the UK. So, I hope you probably know that. Yeah, her dad. It's one of those uh, Jibu's uh, conflict for jihad, Islamic uh, jihad, this stuff down northern Nigeria. At that is very old. I think at that is about 90 years or something. Go and search for Musawa. You'll get to see at that. So it was at that slot that they gave her. That's how she became a minister. She's well read, I believe. She's good in the UK. But the job right there is all for them to, you know, I mean, jump into the uh, bandwagon of the propaganda. Their education is not to better Nigeria. Okay, if you begin to look at what at, she was talking about unity, using music, it was grand dance. So, Davido, and then uh, all of the musicians from everywhere, pay them, let everybody dance up and, you know, jubilate and go home. And then we just feel so united. These are the ideas. Human capital development. To them, eh? Not that they don't know, by the way. Sure, you get. Okay. There are many other factors, so that they are dipping, they have dipped their hands into. They will keep like 90% of Nigerians born or yet unborn in the perpetuity of poverty. There is some factors to that one. Okay. But in order to kind of come to you and make it look like they are doing something. I told you this, right? Economic saboteurs. The difference between Tifnumbu 
and the likes of uh, Jolantan, Bokuari, is that when Tifnumbu, like using the Lagos template, when he gains power, he owns it. He owns the state. He owns the country. Now, well, he owns the state. Now he owns the country. You see, every one of them that is working for him, everyone, every, each person, to every uh, whatever appointment he gives to them, they all have one simple strategic job to do. How to make sure that Tifnumbu's uh, presence and Tifnumbu's uh, you know, control is totally established there. You've seen that of the central bank, Abi. So Musawa and Gang believes that Tifnumbu's policy of sharing rice money, not policy wise, okay, is I mean it's believed that what we build or what is building your future. So yeah, let's go back to that Abuja. Where Tifnumbu Arch, Jolantan, Bukwari, um, even Salami, the others. You know the the arrival, the end. I mean, did the gathering, and then the exit. I put all of that together. Yeah. was just it to say oh yeah I, I, I like that and they're like you are doing very good job we are behind you continue then that same time he signed into law yes the salary increase for the judicial workers three hundred percent salary increase that will automatically give the chief justice whoever is the chief justice of nigeria can now go home from 25 million a year to somewhere around eh, 62 million a year that's just the basic salary then allowances, you know, extra code this or that, training this, that this, you know, loose allowances. Now, the chief justice, they usually go home with about 70, 75 million a year. 
will now be going on with between 230 million to 260 million naira a year. I mean, inflation is everywhere, though, right? So you can't really compare 72 million naira 15 years, no, sorry, in 2015 and 72 million naira now, obviously, yeah, okay? So yeah, they got that. Then they turn around that if we should go and commission 30 CNG buses in order to ease means of transportation for the poor, 30 or 36 states, 774 local government areas. They send a false back. Mr. President will cut the tape and inspect the vehicles. Your Excellency, Mr. President, has just completed the inspection of the high-grade CNG buses.